Hi, I've been taking Paul McOrder's uh, V Python class and we're on lesson 16. We're working on our analog clock. Today's homework was to uh, sync the clock to the system clock on the computer. Um, <laughs> I spent three hours searching and having false starts and thinking about what I needed and uh, I, sort of crazy. I ended up with, ended up doing the job with three or four lines of code. <laughs> Anyhow, that's how it goes. At least I was learning something in the process. So. Uh, let's start off with a review of the code that uh, we started with the, with the second hand and everything like that. I'd finished that up last week. There's another video if you want to go in depth into, as to what that is, but we'll go through it a little bit here. So uh, we're importing a couple of uh, libraries, um, setting up some parameters, variables and parameters on the clock. And then basically we're uh, just creating our objects, the face itself, uh, the center shaft to hide the hand in the middle of the hands, uh, putting the minute ticks on the clock, putting the hour ticks on the clock. And while we're looping around for that, I went ahead and put the numbers on the clock. So um, like I said, you want to learn how I did the numbers or more about the numbers, you can look at the last video. And basically we create our second hand, minute hand, and hour hand, and uh, just give them a position. And then uh, uh, then we run through the while true. And uh, basically uh, we're doing a rate of a hundred times a second. So we're incrementing our seconds by one one hundredth of a second. So after a hundred iterations, you ought to be at a second. And um, I tested it and it, it runs 59 and a half seconds about uh, for each minute. So it's running just a little slow. That's probably got to do with the time it takes in between checking if it's ready to do another rate. So um, it was pretty close, but it was losing time. I mean, really, I didn't even really want to mess with trying to fix that. It looked good anyhow. Um, so once we get our time in seconds, uh, we create our angle, second hand angle, by using our, in radians, by using our two pi, and we have 60 seconds per minute so we're dividing it by 60 one sixtieth of time around is equal to one second so that's how that works and then uh, basically we're updating our uh, axis vector on our second hand and then um, and next line down we're just uh, doing our math it's this math is rock solid. It's like gears on a mechanical clock. They don't change. So um, uh, there's 60 seconds in a minute and 12 hours or one twelfth of the way around for the hour. So yeah, so this is all rock solid and uh, uh, runs great. And I no sense in changing that code at all. So um, then I had to figure out, okay, so how are we going to implement uh, system time on here? And I thought about it for a little while and I said, well, if I have, uh, if I start my program right at midnight with zero seconds at midnight, then any time through the day, the number of seconds is equal to the position of all three hands. You know, even after 12 o'clock, it just keeps looping around. And uh, so I said, uh, I thought that the best thing to do is trying to find the seconds that's, that have passed since midnight. So I looked at the time library and 
really did a few false starts and trying to get things going. And um, best I could do was to get like uh, pull the seconds out of the uh, out of the time that dot time uh, uh, lo time dot local time array and pull that out and update each second. So that made it look like it's a, one of those jerky clocks that move a second hand at a time. I said, nah, I ought to be able to do better than that, but couldn't figure it out. So um, I went online and uh, uh, was searching for time, number of seconds, uh, past m since midnight fractions and uh, I uh, happened upon a couple sites and they pointed to they were the examples they were using was using a different library called the uh, the date time library so basically, it's built on top of the time library, but it also um, it, it says it's good for manipulating dates and time. So I started reading through that and looked at a couple. I looked at several examples, and <laughs> I said, "Well, this can't be this easy." So anyhow, we'll uh, look at look at how easy it actually was. So, like I said, this is our basically our clock. It's a, uh, you know, just updating the time in the while true. So, let's look at what I came up with for our CPU time. So, basically, at the top, I'm adding the date time library, built in library. Didn't have to do anything with that. And I commented out this increment for the hundred one one hundredth of a second increment and instead I uh, added these three lines this first one here just gets the system time as it is now the thing about that is that you it gets all the data including microseconds so that was something that I need I needed something a little bit more precision in seconds to make a smooth running clock. So I got that. And then uh, the second line here, they, uh, uh, the library has a nice uh, replace method that where you can get your, uh, your date and time, but you can replace certain things in there that you want to and keep all the others. So to make it midnight, all you got to do is make your hour, minute, second, and microseconds to zero, and the rest of the system time stays the same. So, so you're good to go there. And then, like I said, this is for manipulating time. So now you can uh, do subtraction. So you take your now minus the midnight and... Uh, you can actually get your full seconds out of that. Um, and then you have to do the same thing. The seconds will bring all the, it'll subtract the seconds from the two seconds. But to do the fractional portion, you have to uh, um, do that as a separate thing. And then, like I say, that's going to give you microseconds. So it goes all the way down to one millionth of a second. But um, uh, uh, you get those, so you to get to change that from a whole number to a fraction, you got to divide by a million. Um, and then um, I tried it without by just doing that, but it was too many significant digits for the uh, program to run. It just crashed on me. So what I did is I rounded that uh microseconds to two digits so you get something like 34,500.07 or something like that for your microsecond so you're actually only getting a hundredths of a second 
I don't know how, whether we could go any farther, but that's all I needed. A hundredth of a second would be fine. So basically all that did is give our time in seconds and, uh, you know, uh, uh, with a two place decimal value and the rest of the rest of the clock just runs fine. So uh, it, uh, and it tracks time just fine. Like I said, we didn't have to worry about the hours or the minutes in here because, um, you know, our, our math down here doesn't change. There are no sense repeating the same thing. So we're trying to import all that when we just uh, got it already listed. Oh, well, I'm gonna show you what it looks like running. So my digital clock down here says 322. So if you look at it, it's 322 and some seconds. So we'll watch the minute hand and it's just about right on the 12 or the second hand is right on the 12 when it switches over. So I'll keep an eye on the uh, digital clock. You guys could do the same if you wanted to, but it's there and uh, Coming around. See, we're almost, the minute hand's almost on the three, but we're not all the way up there yet. So we're coming up and it's going to be about now. Yep. So it's less than a second late. So, and that doesn't change. That just has to do with the update, the time it takes to update the clock from the time it gets the information. So everything's working great on that. And I couldn't believe it. Spent three hours to write four lines of code. <laughs> but again, I learned a lot, so it doesn't matter. We might as well sit here and watch it go around one more time. It's fun to watch it keep time. I've watched it for about 10 minutes to make sure it went away and got something to drink and came back. and. Uh, it was still keeping perfect time. So like I said, it should, it, you know, the only difference is whatever time it takes for that last turnover. So we're going to be on 23 now coming up. 24. Yep. About a half a second late getting that second one. That's the difference in the time it takes to draw the clock, I guess. So anyhow, I had fun. Uh, Go back and look at the code. So like I said, all three hours of work for three lines of code plus putting the library at the top. Kind of crazy. Anyhow, thanks for the journey, Paul. It's we're we're on a great journey and hope to keep keep on that journey. Talk to you.